Let's continue with our connection between vector calculus and topology. Um, I want to give you give a little background, make make sure again this is something that um, I'm not going to prove for uh, for this video, but um, the background theorem is that uh, if f is a nice vector field on some open subset of R, really Rn actually, uh, and the integral of f over any closed curve, so that's what this little circle means, closed curve, but I'll emphasize that, any closed curve is always zero, then f is conservative. And this is the theorem that I've been alluding to for a while. And that's really, really nice. Um, it, this is a great kind of conclusion. It says f is, is very explicit. And in fact, from our point of view from these videos, the last few videos, it's trivial. And so um, it's sort of topologically uninteresting, something that doesn't have any circulation. Um, it can be just created as a, as a gradient, a conservative vector field. Okay. Now, theorem two on the left is sort of a one higher dimensional analog of that. In fact, when we translate this to differential forms, it will be just exactly the same theorem, um, but just in a different degree. So it says when f is a vector field defined and nice on some open subset m of r3, such that the integral over any closed surface, okay, so in double integral over a closed surface, now it's dot ds, now it's a flux integral, which will translate to a, a two-form integral pretty soon. If this is always zero for all closed s, then it turns out that f is not just divergence-free, it's definitely that, but it's even the stronger thing that it's curl of g. Now remember, in all of R3, if this open subset M is all of R3, then there's no distinction between things that are a curl and things that are divergence free. But this allows us to say more about when does that identification happen. Okay, so let's look at, uh, theorem, look at theorem three for a second here. Let M be a blank connected open subset of R3. Any nice blank free vector field is the blank of another vector field. Okay, so we're interested in taking, looking at divergence-free vector fields and asking, are they all the curl of something? That's what we've been doing for the last video or two. And the claim is that that's going to be true, not just if it's all of R3, but if it's any subset of R3 that has a certain kind of connectivity. And this is your last chance to pause the video. Claim it's going to be a two-connected open subset. So let's look at the proof of that. Okay, I guess I'll go back over to here to this window. Okay, so I am going to use this theorem. All I need to know, is it true that the closed curve or the closed surface flux, is that true for all closed surfaces S? Well, what does two connected mean? We've got to remember that. Two connected means that if S is a closed surface, then S is actually a boundary. This was the weak condition on a surface when I had that two by two grid in the previous video. This is the strong condition. Two connectedness means that there is no distinction between the weak and the strong condition. And um, so that says, okay, I'm going to test all of these possible integrals. Then that flux integral is really the integral over the boundary of E of F dot DS which by the divergence theorem is the integral over all of E of div f, but that's what I'm assuming is zero. And then this is true, and the theorem says that it's the curl of G. And I know this, I, I hope this is a little disappointing. I hope you're paying enough attention for this to be a little disappointing. It's like, well, I really want to see this theorem proved. That seems to be sweeping a lot under the rug, but there's only so much we can do at, at this level, only so much I want to do at this level. Okay, so the main thing is I wanted to make this connection between a certain kind of condition on the topology of our space and the relationship of these two concepts that are closely linked but not usually identical, divergence-free and being a curl. And when we translate it to forms, it's going to look very, very pretty. So one more example space. 
let's take R3. We had previously taken R3 and taken an axis out of it, and basically that was ex almost exactly the same as taking R2 and taking a point out of it. But if you take M9 to be R3 minus the origin, okay, then let's see what kind of connectivity that has. Okay, so that's one part A. You might want to stop the video at this point. Is it connected? Absolutely. I can easily avoid that to connect two points. Is it one connected? Oh, still, so part A. Is it one connected? Well, if I have a closed curve, can I fill it in? Well, it ha might happen to be that closed curve if I tried to fill it in in a simple way. Maybe the x closed curve is actually in the xy plane. And if I try to fill it in in a simple way, I would accidentally I would, I would hit that point. But if that's true, I can always kind of just push it up. I don't know if I can draw that very well. I can push that surface up a little bit to avoid that one point. Not an incredibly rigorous proof, but hopefully pretty clear that I can, f I can stretch a membrane across any closed curve, easily avoiding that one point. What about two connected? That's where it fails. And this is has to do with the example I showed before. I actually kind of jumped the gun on this a little bit, which is if I take a sphere, the two sphere, then that's certainly a closed surface. It has no boundary. Its boundary is empty. And yet if I try to fill the, in the, the interior, I can't avoid that point. And so it's not too connected. So this is a, a great example of where the theorem we just had is going to fail. And part B is something that, as I said, I already kind of jumped the gun on. I often like to call this the gravitational vector field, although it's got the wrong sign. And here we're going to normalize it with a 1 over 4 pi. Well, we just discovered uh, before, I claimed that I would let you do a calculation. The divergence of that turns out to be 0. Not a super hard calculation, OK? Um, but the flux through the unit sphere, and in fact, the sphere of u radi any radius a of g dot ds, with the 1 over 4 pi in here, it's a very nice number. It's exactly equal to 1, OK? And in fact, we talked about previous video. If I had any closed surface enclosing the origin, then I just apply the divergence theorem to what's in here, div g equals 0. So the flux out of this is the same as the flux out of this. So really, any surface at all enclosing the origin has unit flux out. Okay. So why is this going to be useful? It's the last example of our standard thing, which is I, know, I now know that this is an example of a divergence-free vector field. It has non-zero flux through a closed surface, so g itself is not equal to the curl of, let's say, uh, h, some vector field. But I claim it's essentially the only example. And let's see if we can prove that. Very similar. OK. I take f, and it's known to be divergence-free on this space where it could easily go haywire at the origin. And that's what the interesting case is, where it does go haywire at the origin, just like g does. Okay, We're going to calculate the flux of f through the unit sphere. That's a ds. Okay, Call that a. And then the claim is, if I take that, uh, if I take the original vector field that has this flux, and I subtract off a g, well, this guy has exactly the same flux through that sphere. The claim is that that is the curl of, let's say, some vector field h. Why is that? It's this big theorem that I am refusing to prove, theorem 2 up here. The way to figure out that something is a curl is to make sure that its integral over any closed surface is equal to 0. OK, let's go back to here. And I'm just going to integrate this. OK. Well, the integral over a sphere enclosing the origin, minus a g, dot ds. Well, that's the integral of f dot ds, which is by definition a, minus a times the integral of this normalized outward pointing sort of gravity or electrostatic field. That's going to be a minus a equals 0. OK, now that's not the only kind of surface there might be. That's the surface that's enclosing the origin. But if it doesn't enclose the origin, then hey, they're just both individually 0 in the first place. OK, so it doesn't take too much thought to, to convince yourself that no matter what the surface is, these guys are either going to be individually 0 or they'll exactly cancel out. And then if we trust that theorem 2, 
um, then in fact, this guy is the curl of something. And once again, we kind of treat this as sort of trivial. Hey, if I want to create divergence-free vector fields, this is a really stupid, easy way to do it. There's no, um, there's nothing that depends on what space you're on in particular. Just pick any H and take the curl of it. But then that's not going to be enough to create all possible divergence-free vector fields on R3 minus the origin. But if I just include a certain multiple of the gravity vector field, then I'm good. So this is the only example, and this, there's only one number needed to specify the, um, the divergence-free vector field. And then we wrap up with this line of reasoning with number 5. What if I took R3 minus n distinct points? Got a point here, a point here, a point here, a point here. Let's say four points. Then I could create the gravity or electrostatic, coulomb, whatever you want to call it, vector field coming out of all these guys. I could say, let's say this is uh, strength 3, this is strength um, 5, this is strength 7, this is strength 13. Just make them prime just for fun. That's going to be an example of a divergence-free vector field on this space. And any vector divergence-free vector field that had flux 3 here, flux 5 here, flux 7 here, flux 13 here would be that example plus the curl of some vector field. And so we need the number of numbers to specify a divergence-free vector field up to the trivial operation of adding curl h is equal to the number of points removed. In other words, the number of holes that we've got. And so this, uh, again, is the identification we've been seeing all along. Is This is a fancy way to count the holes in a space. Or if you know the holes in a space, it tells you very precise information about what kind of leeway you have to create these interesting vector fields. And I'll save this extra credit problem for the next video.